1954 was a pivotal racing year, with a new Formula One using 2.5-litre engines. Mercedes were preparing for their return to Grand Prix racing, and Juan Manuel Fangio was to join when the cars were ready mid-year. Defending world champion Alberto Ascari signed for Lancia, but their car wasn't ready until later in the year. Maserati debuted the 250F, while Ferrari managed to introduce no less than four different models. Le Mans entered a new era, with purpose-built sports racing cars from Jaguar and Ferrari. Fangio drove a Maserati 250F in the Argentinian Grand Prix, winning a chaotic rain-hit event from Nino Farina. Bill Vukovic won his second Indianapolis 500 from Jimmy Bryan and Jack McGrath. Fangio followed up with a win in the Belgian Grand Prix at Spa from Maurice Trantignon's Ferrari and Sterling Moss in a private 250F. 1954 saw the debut of the powerful 4.9-litre V12 Ferrari 375 Plus, the leading car driven by Froilan Gonzalez and Maurice Trantignon. They were taking on the new Jaguar D-Type with its aerodynamic body, 3.4-litre dry sump straight-six engine and disc brakes. It was a pure sports racing car, as opposed to the modified road-going C-Type. Briggs Cunningham was back with a three-car team, while Aston Martin entered four cars. Le Mans was round four of the Sports Car World Championship. Nino Farina and Umberto Malioli had won the opening round the Buenos Aires 1,000 kilometers in the Ferrari 375+. Plus. The Sabring 12-hour race saw a surprise win to Bill Lloyd and Sterling Moss in the one and a half liter Oscar MT4. Round three, the Mille Miglia, went to Alberto Ascari in the Lancia D24. In his usual role as the hare, Sterling Moss sprinted away. The Ferrari had the straight line speed, while the Jaguar had the braking and road holding. Others seemed to have neither. Moss outbraked himself at the end of the Malsan in an effort to stay with the Ferrari. Sliding his D-type, 1953 winner Duncan Hamilton was in superb form. By Sunday morning, the Tony Rolt Duncan Hamilton D-type was fighting it out with the Gonzales Trantignon Ferrari when the rains came. Wearing goggles in the heavy rain and spray, Tony Rolt was struggling. Jaguar had been damaged in a minor accident during the night. When the leading Ferrari came in for the final pit stop, it was reluctant to restart. The gap between the two was coming down. Consternation in the Ferrari pit, but Jaguar too was under pressure. Rolt was brought in and Hamilton, complete with visor, jumped aboard. Gonzalez set out in the Ferrari, knowing that he had to maintain his pace until the 24 hours were up. That he managed to do so was a remarkable feat of control in a car that wasn't as drivable as the D-Type. By just one lap, Ferrari took the 1954 Le Mans 24-hour race. Maurice Trantignon celebrated with Froilan Gonzalez. Ferrari went on to win the Sports Car World Championship from Lancia and Jaguar. Duncan Hamilton brought in the D-Type Jaguar, finishing second. The Cunningham C4R of Bill Spear and William Sherwood was third. The first weekend of July 1954 was of the greatest significance in Grand Prix racing, as the Mercedes-Benz team left their headquarters in Stuttgart and crossed the French border en route to Rams and the French Grand Prix. After warming up with their 1952 sports car program, 
Mercedes was making a determined effort in Grand Prix. Team manager Alfred Neubauer and designer Rudolf Uhlenhoit were in control. The Mercedes W196, built with all the knowledge available to Daimler-Benz engineers, was the best thought out and prepared Grand Prix car of the era. Among the revolutionary features were desmodromic valve operation, direct fuel injection and a fully streamlined body. Maserati lost their best driver as Fangio returned to Mercedes. Three straight-eight Mercedes were prepared for Fangio and German drivers Karl Kling and Hans Hermann who were making their Grand Prix debuts. Because Maserati were now without a top-class driver, Gianni Lancia came to their rescue, releasing Alberto Ascari and Luigi Villarese. A feature of the French Grand Prix weekend was the annual 12-hour sports car race. It started at midnight and finished at midday. Although this race wasn't part of the World Championship, there were works entries from Ferrari, Jaguar, Godini, Cunningham and Bristol. Drivers who competed in the 12-hour race couldn't race in the Grand Prix. One of those was Sterling Moss. Because he was driving with Jaguar, his Maserati 250F was borrowed by the factory. As usual, Moss set the pace in the D-type. The factory Ferrari 750 Monza of Umberto Malioli and Romain Manzon retired after only 25 laps with gearbox problems. The HWM Jaguar of Australia's Tony Gaze and Britain's Graham Whitehead leaves the pit. Maston Gregory and the veteran Clemente Biondetti in the Ferrari 375MM. They finished fourth. A shower of rain made conditions treacherous, but fortunately the track dried by early morning. The fast, round circuit was perfectly suited to the D-types, like Tony Rolt and Duncan Hamilton fresh from their second place at Le Mans. Sherwood Johnston and Briggs Cunningham in the Cunningham, and just behind was the team car of John Fitch and Phil Walters. Despite this effort to get back on track, the René Bonnet Claude Storey DB Panhard didn't make it to the finish. As dawn broke, the Tony Rolt Duncan Hamilton Jaguar was trailing the sister Moss Walker car. Roger Loyer and Charles Rinon in the Gordini T15S retired with rear suspension damage. Seventh for Tony Gaze and Graham Whitehead. The number one Jaguar of Sterling Moss and Peter Walker retired. Waiting near the finish, the number two Jaguar of Duncan Hamilton talking to Sterling Moss. They waited for the Peter Whitehead and Ken Wharton D-type to come past at midday. After their second place at Le Mans, Jaguar was back in the winner's circle at Reims, with the tired but happy Whitehead and Wharton. Returning to the Grand Prix, Juan Manuel Fangio and Carl Kling were fastest in practice. The fully streamlined body had given the Mercedes a one second per lap advantage on the fast Reims circuit. Alberto Ascari in the Maserati 250F was third, with Hans Hermann alongside on the second row. The doyen of French motor racing Charles Farou flagged the drivers off. Fangio and Kling shot away, while Ascari made a poor start. Trying to catch up, his engine blew on the first lap. Hans Hermann broke the lap record before having to retire with engine overheating. Prince Bira held third place for much of the race until he ran out of fuel and had to make an unscheduled pit stop, letting Robert Monzon's Ferrari up to third. Fangio won by a fraction of a second from Karl Kling, who was pushing harder than was necessary in the circumstances. 
Monzon was third, Vera fourth with Villarese fifth. It was a triumphant return for Mercedes. After their performance in France, Mercedes were pre-race favourites for the British Grand Prix at Silverstone. Alberto Ascari blew an engine in practice and had to start from the back of the grid. Fangio started from pole position, but the all-enveloping bodywork on the W196 restricted his visibility from the cockpit. At the end of lap one, Gonzalez and Hawthorne led Fangio. Ascari had a sensational first lap, passing 19 cars, but eventually retired with a blown engine. Sterling Moss was now catching Fangio and passed him on lap 55. Fangio's Mercedes was now looking second-hand after contact with the oil drums lining the circuit. The car was occasionally jumping out of gear and was leaking oil all over its driver. Sterling Moss put in a fine performance with his private Maserati and had a long battle with Mike Hawthorne's Ferrari. With just 10 laps to go, Moss had to retire when the De Dion tube failed. It was a Ferrari 1-2, with Froilan Gonzalez winning from Mike Hawthorne. Fangio's protégé, Onofre Marimont, was third in the Maserati. The result restored some of Mercedes' rivals' confidence. For the German Grand Prix, Mercedes entered four cars. Pre-war ace Hermann Lang joining Fangio, Kling and Hermann. It was a last-minute rush to get all the cars ready, especially as they featured a new open-body design. During practice, Fangio was to suffer one of the hardest emotional shocks of his racing career. Onofre Marimont, the son of his old friend Domingo, was killed during practice when he crashed at Verzeifen Bridge. The Argentinian drivers at the meeting Fangio, Gonzalez and Roberto Mires were naturally very upset. Despite his emotions, Fangio was still able to take pole position. Hawthorne was next to Fangio and Sterling Moss in the now works-assisted Maserati completed the front row. Hans Hermann and Froilan Gonzalez were on the second row. Gonzalez in the Ferrari 625 came through to lead Fangio, Moss, Lang, Hermann and Hawthorne. Fangio caught Gonzalez and took the lead. Moss was now third, followed by Lang and Hermann with Hawthorne and Bera. But Moss retired with engine trouble on lap two. Lang was driving superbly but the car was trailing smoke. Rushing up through the field was Carl Kling. Lang passed Gonzalez, and Kling lapped in 9 minutes 59. Kling began to close on Lang. Team manager Alfred Neubauer was frantic, as Kling was not supposed to do this. What they hadn't realized was that Kling had a leaking fuel tank and was trying to build a lead before his pit stop. Herman Lang spun out and stalled his car. Fangio now led from Carl Kling, who was chasing hard. Alberto Ascari had to watch from the sidelines, his Lancia still not ready to race. Vast crowds lined the circuit. Despite the devastation of World War II, Mercedes were able to call on the accumulated engineering skills to create this new breed of Grand Prix racer. It was only 15 years since they had last raced at the highest level and personnel and knowledge were still available.
Kling eventually had to make his extra stop for fuel. He was concerned about how the W196 was handling and took time to inspect the rear suspension while the fuel was going in. What was not obvious was that a locating wire in the back axle had broken. Kling returned to the track, now down in fourth place and running at reduced speed. Fangio was in a comfortable lead and able to separate his emotions from the race. In contrast, Gonzalez was so upset at Onofre Marimor's death, he pulled in to retire. Mike Hawthorne took over Gonzalez's car. Hawthorne was closing on Fangio until Drizzle caused him to slow down. It turned out to be an easy but joyless win for Juan Manuel Fangio, ahead of the Mike Hawthorne, Froilan Gonzalez Ferrari, with Maurice Trantignon third, Carl Klinger disappointed fourth, with Sergio Mantovani a steady fifth. The Swiss Grand Prix at Bern turned out to be the last one held on the difficult Bremgarten circuit. Still missing from the action was Alberto Ascari. Prince Bira was enjoying having a good run in his final season of Grand Prix racing. Gonzalez out-qualified Fangio with Moss third fastest. But in the race, Fangio led from the start. Moss soon passed Gonzalez for second and tried hard to catch Fangio. However, he was under pressure when Hawthorne caught him. The two Britons duelled around the Parkland circuit. It ended on lap 22, when Moss retired with falling oil pressure caused by the failure of the oil pump. Hawthorne himself retired with fuel feed problems. That promoted Gonzalez to second and Hans Hermann in the other Mercedes to third. Fangio lapped the entire field up to second place Gonzalez. Maserati 250Fs were the choice of private entrance, encouraged by Fangio's success at the start of the season before he joined Mercedes. Fangio won by nearly a minute, his fifth victory of the season, and the world championship was close at hand. Gonzalez took second, Hans Hermann third, while the Maseratis of Roberto Mires, Sergio Mantovani and Ken Wharton were fourth, fifth and sixth. For the Italian Grand Prix at Monza two weeks later, both Ferrari and Maserati were determined they were not going to suffer another defeat at the hands of Mercedes. Alberto Ascari was again released by Lancia, but after his poor results for Maserati at Rhin and Silverstone, he rejoined Ferrari with Hawthorne, Gonzalez and Robert Manzon. Alberto was anxious to prove to the Italian public that he wasn't a spent force. Maserati prepared seven cars for the factory drivers and private owners, and this stretched their resources. Fangio and Gonzalez confer. Only a second separated the fastest five drivers in practice. It was clearly going to be a fast and exciting race. The Mercedes of Kling and Fangio led away, followed by Moss and Ascari. Moss was then passed by Ascari and Gonzalez, the three of them battling for third place. On lap five, Kling spun and rejoined in sixth. This left Fangio leading from Ascari and Moss. On the following lap, Ascari sailed past Fangio to take the lead. At first, Ascari pulled away from Fangio, 
but the Argentinian caught up again, and for lap after lap, they swapped positions. Moss and Villarese were holding third and fourth when Villarese took the initiative, passed Moss on lap 40, and then Fangio to take second behind Ascari, while Moss followed him into third. The two Maseratis were among the fastest cars in the race, but there was also a lack of team discipline, allowing two cars to race so hard in attempting to take the lead. Having driven his best race for years, Luigi Villarese had to retire on lap 43. In a burst of over-exuberance, he had revved the engine to 8,200 RPM and wrecked the clutch. Moss took the lead on lap 45, only for Ascari to fight back on lap 47. However, Ascari's race was over. He had to retire with a dropped valve. This left Moss in the Maserati in the lead from Fangio's Mercedes by 20 seconds. Then disaster struck for Moss. He had to pit with falling oil pressure, more oil was poured in, and Moss rejoined in second place, but he had to push the car over the finish in 11th. Fangio took over the lead, which he held to the finish, to win from Mike Hawthorne and the shared Froilan Gonzalez Maurice Trantignon Ferrari. Fangio was world champion for the second time, securing the title driving for both Maserati and Mercedes. One Grand Prix remained in 1954, the Spanish at Pedralbes in Barcelona. The Lancia D50 finally appeared to be driven by Villarese and Ascari. Ascari showed the car had potential, setting the fastest lap in practice. He passed early leader Harry Schell and led in commanding style until the clutch failed on lap 11. Mike Hawthorne took the lead for Ferrari, followed by teammate Gonzalez. Fangio suffered from engine problems due to the radiator duct being partially blocked by paper. This caused the engine to overheat, and when he eventually finished third, Fangio was covered in oil and asbestos brake dust. Mike Hawthorne ended his two seasons at Ferrari with a win. 1954 had been a great success for Fangio, overcoming his poor seasons of 52 and 53. In a ceremony at the Mercedes-Benz headquarters in Stuttgart, the Daimler-Benz management presented Fangio with an award to commemorate his triumph in the 1954 World Championship. For 1955, Mercedes signed Sterling Moss and was entering all the major sports car races as well. Could anyone stop them? <laughs> 